himself has fasted and has prayed. Alone and fasting, Moses saw the loving God who gave the law, and to Elijah fasting came the steeds and chariots of flame. So Daniel trained his mystic sight, delivered from the lion's might, and John the bridegroom friend became the herald of Messiah's name. Then grant that we like them be true, consumed in fast and prayer with you, our spirit strengthen with your grace, and give us joy to see your face. O Father, Son, and Spirit blessed, to you be every prayer addressed, who are in threefold name adored from age to of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, this Sunday of Lent, next Sunday, Palm Sunday, Holy Week, then Easter Sunday, yes, my friend, Lent is coming to an end. But as we now approach the final days, we remember in a special way, an ultimately important way, the suffering and death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we ask ourselves if we are willing to resolve to die to sin and to live faithfully, selflessly, and courageously in the Lord. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we pause to acknowledge our faults and failings. Lord Jesus, you suffered, died, and were raised from the dead for our eternal salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the new and everlasting covenant of love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you restore a steadfast spirit within us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, O Lord God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from Egypt, for they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this 
is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from the least to the greatest, shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Create in me, create in me a clean heart, O God. Create in me, create in me a clean heart, O God. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your merciful love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me completely from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Create in me, create in me a clean heart, O God. Restore in me the joy of your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. I will teach transgressors your ways that sinners may return to you. Create in me, create in me a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And When he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven came and said, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Now, what does that mean exactly? Now, everyone here is very smart. We know that Jesus isn't just giving us a lesson in biology. We also know that St. John did not write his gospel to give a tutorial in growing wheat. Jesus is referring to himself. And he does so, as he does in parables, by using a familiar image from everyday life to illustrate his point. His death will lead to new life, not only for him, but for everyone. And all of us here and watching believe that, or we wouldn't be Christian. But there's another meaning that quietly lies within the seed of that image, and that has to do with our death. I'm not talking just about our physical deaths and our resurrection with Jesus Christ. I'm talking about something that happens in our daily lives, and that is dying to self. In short, we are called to let go of, to relinquish, to let die anything that keeps us from a greater freedom to follow Christ. And by dying to ourself, we surprisingly experience new life. A small story to share. When my wife and I first moved to Delaware so that I could take a new banking position, we thought, now? we were ready to have children. College degrees were done. Student loans and payments were significantly underway. We purchased a nice colonial home. And professionally, I was beginning at an up-and-coming bank. The time was right. Well, while the timing was right for us, this was our plan. Things did not work out the way we expected or wanted. Like some other couples, we found that having biological children was not going to happen. But we did not find this out right away, but over time with doctors, hospitals, and yes, tears. It's challenging to put into words the feelings of disappointment, despair, and anger at that time. As this played out, I lamented about it to my spiritual advisor as I still had one. I wanted to have children on my and my wife's schedule according to our plan. We had everything in place. We were ready, but we couldn't. Nothing seemed to soothe us. So I said to my spiritual advisor, I don't want this cross. And he said, it's hardly a cross if you do want it. I wanted to exercise complete control over my life and future. I wanted everything on my terms. And it took some time for me to see a new life, but it came. It was the realization that everything that I would encounter really is thanks to God's grace. It was a freedom from the need to control everything. My wife and I began an amazing journey into international adoption. Through that process, we learned a lot about humility. 
Our travels took us to the country of Kazakhstan just after 9-11, where at one point we were just 300 miles away from the US bombing beginning in Pakistan. Since this first daughter was so young at the time, when it came to get her sister in China, I traveled by myself after the scare of the SARS breakout in 2003. My new infant daughter and I spent two weeks together in China, basically only us, until we came home to America. I cannot tell you how many times I used the term, by the grace of God. There was something initially that died in us, my wife and I, but indeed, a new life had begun. Many have far worse problems than what I just described. One may be facing a serious illness, or someone in their family may be. Maybe someone close has died. Or during this pandemic, one has lost their job or a significant amount of their savings. They're terrible situations to find themselves in. It's natural to be angry, sad, or confused. Yet in all these vulnerable situations, there may be a new way of relating to God and an invitation to experience new life. Now, I want to be clear. I am not saying God wills these awful things or that we should like them or even welcome them. But one question we Catholics can ask during times of suffering is this. In these difficult and painful experiences, are there grains of wheat that need to die so that we can experience new life? For example, while we may be concerned rightly with a safe and secure financial life, maybe one thing that bothers us is if our financial situation leads to a loss in status. And maybe we might come to see that that is not such a bad thing to let go of. Maybe this or something else has been preventing us from some freedom. If we let particular grains die, we might actually be freed of something. In the midst of suffering, we might experience some new life. This is not easy stuff. As the gospel says, the seed first has to fall to the earth before it dies. And that falling is painful. In the second reading, St. Paul says that Jesus offers up prayers with loud cries and tears. Loud cries and tears. Jesus accepts the future that God is holding out to him, but it hurts. It definitely hurts. But that is the process of dying to self. Does this sound like that old, let's offer it up approach to things? It's not. Because painful as it is, it is a necessary step to something life-giving, freedom. When some parts of our lives feel especially like dark times, we are often invited to let go, to abandon, to become more detached, but not simply for the sake of more pain or more suffering, but for something greater, for new life. And what did Jesus give up? Everything. He gave up everything. What did he let die? Himself. Think about him on the cross. Jesus may have thought at that time that his ministry had failed, that his efforts to bring the disciples together were over, that his preaching had not taken hold. He gives up his hopes on the cross, and he gives up his very body. This is my body given up for you. The final word, though, is not the suffering, but the resurrection. The death of the seed leads to the wonder of the blade of wheat. The crucifixion leads to the marvel of the resurrection. And the one who made the unimaginable sacrifice, who let go of everything, was rewarded with unimaginable new life. Allowing our grains of wheat to fall to the ground and die can be painful, wrenching. It may seem impossible at times to let go of whatever parts of our lives that are keeping us cold and buried in the ground. But once that seed dies, there is always, always new life. And if you doubt that, just wait until Easter Sunday. I believe in one God. Maker of heaven. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten God, one of the Father and the Holy Spirit, God and God, and God, 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 God,
He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come down again, and glory to the judge of the dead, and is even though I have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of life, who has spoken to the Father. I believe in one holy Catholic enough. I give away one baptism. I look for the life of the world. We have gathered here, dear brothers and sisters, to celebrate again the mysteries of our redemption. Let us therefore ask the Almighty God that the whole world may be watered from these springs of all blessings and new life. That Pope Francis and all clergy and religious be blessed in leading with vision and wisdom the Catholic Church and be an example to all the faithful of the world, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer that the leaders of nations work toward peace in troubled areas of the world, and for prosperity where there is peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those preparing for the Easter sacraments may be enriched with continued prayer and study on their journey to becoming members of the Catholic Church community, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may respond to the call of service by helping our brothers and sisters, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that the sick be healed, we pray. Lord. That those who have died may find eternal happiness with our God, especially remembering Richard Woodward for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Lord, I pray. That the Lord may now hear the prayers we hold in our hearts. We pray. Lord, I pray. When we pray, O oh Lord our God, that your people may turn again to you with all their hearts, so that whatever they dare to ask in fitting prayer, they may receive by your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just want to remind you to be sure to take home a copy of the parish bulletin there are many items of interest and importance. Next Sunday, as I said, is Palm Sunday, and we will have blessed palms available at all the masses. Rice bowls are due back next Sunday. If you're not using little boxes, you can also uh, turn in a check or cash in an envelope. Mark Rice Bowl. Your Easter Angel gifts are also due next Sunday in envelopes placed in the collection basket or, or mailed to the church. Uh, also on Thursday the 25th, the Feast of the Unchanged Angel Gabriel, we will have a special. Uh, event on our website, which you may be interested in celebrating the uh, family life. And finally, envelopes are available in your monthly mailings so that you can uh, mention the people living in dead you would like remembered in our Christmas and our Easter novena of remembrance, and there are extra envelopes available at the door of the church if you don't get the usual envelopes. And thank you.
Brothers, sisters, faith in my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our heavenly Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Now it is truly right and just, it is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are giving your children a sacred time for the renewing and the purifying of their hearts, so that free from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and under willingly into his passion, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, <clears throat> as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks to have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember all your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be aware to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. said your bottle, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Blessed are those called 
to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul will be healed. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Unless the Father beckons, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And if you eat of this bread, you shall live forever. You shall live forever. And I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, your Son, in whose body and blood we have a communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what, at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Come upon you all, remain with you forever. Amen. And go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. With thanks be to God.